This video is sponsored by Professional Photographers of America. Hey everyone, today we're gonna to talk about light painting. One goal with light painting is to create abstract results that just aren't possible with regular photography. And we do this by doing long exposures mixed with moving light sources around an image. Now I've done sessions in the past where I incorporated motion blur into my images, but always by pointing a light at a moving subject. But I've never done light painting in a traditional sense where I'm actually moving a visible light source around an image. Now, before I try anything new, I always look to other people who are doing something really well, which pointed me towards Ryan Sims' video on long exposure portraits photography, which is part of PPA's digital education. Ryan's video was extremely straightforward and filled with tons of great tips that confirmed a lot of my thoughts on how to approach light painting. Today, I'll share with you some general tips for light painting that I used in the studio. First, you want it to be dark, like really dark. The darker, the better. This is because you're doing long exposures, and if there's any type of ambient light creeping into those long exposures, then it's just going to lead to motion blur that you can't control. So the darker the environment, the more of a blank canvas that you have, which just allows you the freedom to really control and dial in the light painting in your images. So whatever the space you're in, turn off any overhead lighting, block any window lighting with curtains or V-flats. You can see in our studio, we do this by putting these acoustic foam covers over our windows, which just allows us to block all the daylight coming in. But it's easiest if you're not working against the daylight at all, so if you can do this at night, go for that. Now, if you're looking to do light painting in portraits and you're trying to create these images that have a very sharp subject but then feature the light painting, well then you're gonna need to incorporate flash as well. The flash allows you to freeze your subject at the beginning of an image and then give you the time through the long exposure to do the light painting. Especially for portraits, I find using front curtain sync works way better. You can use rear curtain sync, the same principles will apply, but it's much easier to time your subject their pose and their eyes being open, it's much easier to time that at the front of an exposure with front curtain sync, that's when the flash goes off, as opposed to using rear curtain sync where you have to wait and then try to time that pose at the end of an exposure. Before we continue with more tips, I wanna tell you about a tool I use not only to sharpen my skills as a photographer, but also grow my business. It's PPA, or Professional Photographers of America. I've been a member since 2014, and here's why you might wanna to join too. Here are three vital business resources that they have that I think any and every professional photographer needs. $15,000 worth of equipment insurance. Pretty self-explanatory, but incredibly valuable if you're running your own business. If you're making money off your camera gear, then it is critical that you have that camera gear insured to prevent yourself from any issues down the road. They also have data recovery services, so if you ever have a loss of images on a hard drive or SD card, then you can utilize those. And one of PPA's most useful resources is their customizable contracts. Compare and edit a wide range of documents, including proposals, cancellation letters, model releases, copyright transfers, and much, much more. Take a look at the link in the description and use the code for a special discount on your membership. Whether you are just beginning and want to start on the right foot, or you've been at this a while but want to take your business to the next level, PPA is where you need to be. All right, now back to the photo tips. Let's talk camera settings for a little bit. First, you want to make sure that you're getting a shutter speed that allows you to complete any movement that you want. Now, for everything that I've been doing, it's usually between two and six seconds. But I've also applied this on location where I couldn't do that long of an exposure or I was doing something handheld. And for those, I've used much shorter speeds. Basically, find out how long it takes you to complete any movements and then try to set a shutter speed around that time. I tend to keep my ISO quite low, around 100 or 200, because I'm trying to eliminate any of that ambient light that's coming in. So this depends on whether you're competing with any daylight that might be coming through. But if you're working directly at night, then you might be able to increase the ISO a little bit more. And along the same lines, you tend to want to use a high f-stop because you want to crush any ambient light. An added benefit of using a high f-stop is that it gives you more depth to work with, which just makes a little bit more room for air when you are focusing. Now, because you're often light painting in extremely low light, that means that autofocus is not going to work well. So you're either going to have to manually focus or pop the lights on real quick, get autofocus, and then turn the lights back off before you begin the exposure. This situation really lends itself to being a back button focus user because in that instance, you can turn the lights on and focus real quick and then you don't have to worry about re-engaging your autofocus when you press the shutter or flipping into manual focus on the lens or anything which could move your camera. So back button focus works great here. And everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere back button focus is better. Next, you really want at least two sets of hands here. It's gonna really help out. While it's possible to delay the shutter using either a delay on your camera or some type of remote. Good. 
<laughs> it's just way easier to have one person focused on taking and reviewing the photos, whereas another person is doing the physical light painting. Once you have everything in position, pose your subject and start the exposure. Once the flash fires, you can now safely enter the frame with your constant light source to light paint. Then you begin the light painting so you can move the light throughout the frame, trying to cover areas in the background. And there's so many different ways you can do this, right? You can wave them around frantically. You can try and do it gently and get really nice curves. Just realize that any motion that you do with your hands while painting is going to show up in a unique way on the camera. One thing to consider here is that if you stop moving, you are exposing the same pixels on a camera to light for a longer time, meaning it's going to get brighter. So as you overlap the same area or hold in the same position, those spots will get brighter. Whereas if you gradually move throughout the frame, then everything will stay a lot more even. Now, even though we do freeze our subject with the flash at the beginning of an exposure, when we're doing portraits, we need to make sure that our subjects don't move much because if they move while light is being painted behind them, you can create black gaps surrounding your subject from where they obstructed the light behind them. Now in Ryan's video, he had his subject in complete ninja mode, just wearing a completely black outfit, black mask, black gloves. The all black outfit ensures that if any light hits the person holding the light, that it's not really showing to the camera. You can imagine if someone was wearing all white or you have bright colored skin, then that motion blur could show up when light hits what is holding the light. Whereas when you're wearing all black, it just absorbs it and it doesn't show in the image. Now, when I was doing this for portraits, I remembered to wear all black clothing, but I did not remember to pack my black gloves. So what I ended up doing was using a monopod and I put gaff tape over any of the branding so that my monopod was completely black and then I attached my light source. And this ended up having an additional benefit of just being able to more comfortably move the light around the frame. I can make these really big sweeping movements with the monopod fully extended. So I really appreciated that control and it also allowed me to completely stay out of the frame for a lot of shots. And you can see in these results, I was up on a ladder above my subject, just moving the light source around her and I wasn't even down in the frame. I just controlled it using the monopod. Now the real fun part about light painting is how using different types of constant light sources can yield different results. One of my favorite results was a recommendation by Ryan where he used a piece of plexiglass over an LED source to create a wave-like appearance to the light painting. Now we have lights like the Aperture MC and the Godox TL60, and both of those are really nice for light painting because they're RGB lights, so we can just dial in any color that we want. They also have the effect modes, which allow you to change the intensity or the hue of a light source, and that can give some really cool results for light painting. Now, if you don't have fancy RGB LEDs, it's not a requirement for light painting. You can use any type of constant light source. You can pair that with gels if you want to get colored lights, or if you want a really simple way, you can just use your phone. There are multiple apps out there that allow you to display a color over your entire screen. So you can completely cover that screen with color and use that as a light painting tool. And some of them even have effects modes just like we have on our RGB lights so that you can get multicolored effects. Now this video explores just a sliver of the possibilities of light painting, right? There's so much more that you can do this and you're not limited to doing it in a studio. We can do this on location, we can do this outdoors, preferably at night. It's a little tough in daylight, but you can also incorporate things like using multiple flashes. You can incorporate things like camera movements or zooming to create even more unique results. Really, the possibilities are endless. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at light painting. Leave a like if you did and subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos. And don't forget to check out the exclusive membership offer available from PPA in the description below. All right, guys, take it easy.